This is Jocelyn Wildenstein. She's best known for spending millions of dollars on plastic surgery to look like a cat. But that's not even the most interesting thing about her. As it turns out, Jocelyn's rags to riches life story is a unique glimpse into the world of old money and how it handles those who manage to join it. Indeed, this is a tale of how sudden wealth can cause someone to lose all sense of proportion, eventually costing them and their family most of a fortune. But before we can get into that, we first need to start with Jocelyn's personal history. Jocelynus Parasette was born in Switzerland in 1940 to a modest household. Jocelyn's family history is difficult to verify, with most accounts saying her father was a manager at a struggling department store, whereas her mother worked at a law firm. There's not much else known about Jocelyn's early life, other than that she liked art galleries and probably did ballet. It appears that by the age of 17, though, she began dating a film producer who introduced her to the finer things in life. The couple moved to Paris two years later, a city that indulged Jocelyn's increasingly materialistic tastes. It's no surprise then that she quickly decided to become a socialite and ideas person rather than pursue any meaningful line of work, telling one magazine, quote, I never worry for my career. I am very good at decoration. I am maybe extremely good at decoration. Jocelyn began dating an Italian filmmaker named Sergio Gobi in the early 70s. They shared an apartment in France, where rumor has it that Jocelyn had worked as a high-end escort around this time. Jocelyn has implied that such rumors were little more than the gossip of tabloids, though she's never outright denied it. In any case, it seems Jocelyn was never serious about that relationship, and was instead more concerned about rubbing elbows with rich people who could pay for the hedonistic lifestyle she was growing accustomed to. One such friend was Saudi arms dealer Adnan Khashoggi, who frequently took her around the world in his private jet. These adventures eventually brought her to the continent whose mystery would captivate her the most, Africa. Alec Wildenstein was the son of Daniel Wildenstein, patriarch of the world's richest art dealing family. But although his family's wealth was well into the billions, Alec himself enjoyed little freedom. His early life was shaped by his overbearing father who made him ask for the money to do anything but refused him the chance to go to college. New York Magazine described Alec's upbringing as infantilizing. In a rare offer of independence though, Daniel purchased Alec a 49% share of a ranch in Kenya, with the rest owned by friends of the Wildenstein family. In 1977, the ranch hosted Adnan Khashoggi and a small party of friends including Jocelyn Parasette, who had become skilled at unusual hobbies like piloting, hunting game, and swimming with crocodiles. It shouldn't be a surprise then that Alec agreed to take her on a safari at a nearby estate to put down a rogue lion who was killing too many antelope, on the condition that she, as Alec put it, keep her mouth shut. After that job was done, the two ate the lion's heart to gain its courage, then rode motorcycles throughout the countryside until dawn, where they stopped and embraced for their first kiss. It didn't bother them that they were both already in relationships. Though Jocelyn went home to France not long after, she couldn't stop thinking about Alec, and clearly, the feeling was mutual. It turns out Alec had figured out what salon Jocelyn visited in Paris, arranging to have thousands of orchids delivered ahead of her arrival the Tuesday after she returned. This gesture clearly resonated with Jocelyn, and before long, the two began dating. Jocelyn recounts of their whirlwind romance, quote, He said, I know you will be my wife. He didn't really propose. Within a year, the pair married in Las Vegas, albeit without the blessing of Alec's father. Daniel never wanted his son to tie the knot and didn't even make the time to attend their wedding reception in Switzerland. The newlyweds settled in New York City, where they lived in lavish penthouses. But unlike most couples of their financial stature, the Wildensteins played everything close to the chest. They didn't mingle with other New York billionaires much, but rather spent most of their time in Africa and Europe. Before long, the couple welcomed two kids into the world, and it seemed for now the Wildensteins were a happy, if low-key, family. Alec took up horse racing as his hobby, whereas Jocelyn was content with the constant trips to Africa. In contrast to the destitute living conditions all over the continent, over the years, the Wildensteins repeatedly referred to Africa as a paradise. The ranch in Kenya became a refuge for the family, where they could escape the prying eyes of the paparazzi and focus on what mattered most, the joys of being rich. Jocelyn spent her free time turning the rustic ranch into a splendid estate that housed, quote, 200 buildings, two swimming pools, 55 man-made lakes, and 366 servants. The property was so large that there was an elementary school and a high school built on site for the children of waitstaff. 
Reflecting Alec's growing interest in conservation, the family kept plenty of native animals on their property, including his prized lions and tigers. According to Vanity Fair, it was a drop in the bucket for Jocelyn to spend hundreds of thousands on jewelry and custom Chanel dresses, with both usually designed with her input. Over the years, Jocelyn began fancying exotic pets like various kinds of monkeys. At one point, she even bought a lynx, apparently to please her husband who had become obsessed with wildcats. But little did anyone know the significant trouble the couple was running into behind closed doors. A year after tying the knot, Jocelyn started telling Alec that the skin under his eyes was beginning to sag. Alec, who didn't particularly like old people, suggested they both get eye lifts. Jocelyn agreed, but unlike her husband, she didn't just stop there. As the couple settled into married life, Jocelyn noticed her husband was constantly checking out younger, prettier girls than her. Coupled with the increased time he was spending with his wild cats at the ranch in Kenya, Jocelyn developed an intense jealousy spurring her to action. She quickly returned to the plastic surgeon to demand her face be transformed into something resembling a cat, thinking this would somehow rekindle Alec's attraction to her. Though most likely baffled, the surgeon complied, over time creating the unusual features Jocelyn's face is known for. It is said that Jocelyn's constant surgeries have essentially paralyzed all the muscles in her face, making even blinking difficult. Nevertheless, Jocelyn nowadays insists that her unique profile is the result of her Swiss heritage rather than a botched plastic surgery job. Rather than impress Alec, Jocelyn's transformation was said to have horrified him. He apparently screamed the first time he saw her after the first major surgery. But this was only the beginning. Jocelyn became more and more obsessed with her newfound mission to re-sculpt her face, with even her friends warning her to take it easy. Alec later told Vanity Fair, quote, She was crazy. I would always find out last. She was thinking that she could fix her face like a piece of furniture. Skin does not work that way, but she wouldn't listen. Though the tabloids originally had great difficulty keeping up with the Wildensteins, they finally had something to plaster their pages with. Here was this anomaly of a socialite, already blessed with attractive features, who had gone and exaggerated them to the point of being uncanny. Though at first Jocelyn tried blaming her constant surgeries on Alec, she later admitted that he had never once goaded her into getting the work done. All in all, it appears she spent over $2 million on plastic surgery. Despite these difficulties, Jocelyn and Alec continued enjoying a privileged lifestyle, with their extravagance costing up to a million dollars a month by 1991. Jocelyn's monthly phone bill alone was said to be about $60,000. As the kids got older, the couple's differences became irreconcilable. They realized they had little in common aside from a fondness for Africa. Disgusted with his wife's ever-changing appearance, Alec led a playboy lifestyle that carried on many affairs with younger women, though he was able to keep this under wraps early on. For her part, Jocelyn found fault wherever possible, deriding Alec as a wimp who had to answer to his father for any financial decisions. Screaming matches at the ranch became the norm, and Jocelyn was known for a sailor's mouth that was most unbecoming for a woman of her status. Even the help was put off by the kinds of colorful metaphors she'd hurl at Alec. By 1997, the marriage was in total collapse. Alec was sick of his wife's obsession over appearances, accusing Jocelyn of delaying her own father's funeral for two weeks until she could find the perfect coffin. Jocelyn retorted that it was Alec who caused the delay, making excuses that he was too busy to attend. But over time, Jocelyn's behavior became more and more tiresome. Constantly on Alec's case for minor things like changing his cologne, it wasn't long before the Wildensteins were in the initial stages of divorce. Jocelyn had thought about leaving Alec for years after the birth of their children, but was now totally financially dependent on the Wildenstein fortune. Alec, on the other hand, had already found his side piece, a 21-year-old Russian model named Yelena Jerakova, who he showered with fancy gifts and promises of making her into an actor. Yelena had turned him on to vegetarianism, which helped him lose most of the weight he put on while married to Jocelyn. The rest came off through liposuction. Jocelyn was smart enough to know that Alec was fooling around, and made the point of asking him if he was seeing just one woman or a whole bunch of them. For some reason, the latter was the preferable answer for Jocelyn, and that is exactly what he told her. Then, after urging her to stay away from the New York apartment, Alec was caught red-handed in bed with his young mistress by Jocelyn. The angry and half-naked Alec began waving around his semi-automatic pistol in an attempt to threaten Jocelyn. Alec's defense was that he mistook her bodyguards for burglars. Said bodyguards were quick to call the cops, who took a belligerent Alec away in cuffs as he shouted at Jocelyn, quote, 
I will see you are out on the streets. Vanity Fair wrote that Alex spent 16 hours in custody, heckled by his cellmates as the only suspect wearing an Armani suit. Jocelyn herself seemed less miffed about Alex's unfaithfulness, and more that he had done it right out in the open. She told reporters, quote, Refinement is how man separate himself from the beasts, and now Alec has forgotten that. He has forgotten his manners. A year after the incident, Alec went on the lam, dodging the trial and making himself a fugitive. Apparently he was spotted galvanting across Africa and Europe during this time. The New York Times wrote that he eventually returned to America and pled guilty to charges of menacing in the third degree. The judge let him off with a slap on the wrist, putting a no contact order on him with Jocelyn and revoking his gun license for a year. Since he managed to keep his nose clean during that period, he essentially got off scot-free. Meanwhile, Jocelyn's marital troubles made her more social than ever, and throughout 1998 she was seen visiting New York's most high-end nightclubs. The New York Times reported that she was even awarded top pop icon by Life Nightclub, whose patrons considered her as beautiful as a Caravaggio painting. One haughty fashion designer went so far as saying that people who thought Jocelyn was ugly were, quote, the people who shop at the Gap. The divorce dragged out until 1999. Jocelyn blamed the delay on Alec and his father, who she said were avoiding the specifics of their finances being revealed and scrutinized by the tax man. Allies of the Wildenstein men accused Jocelyn of getting revenge by running her mouth about their financial indiscretions. The New York Times ran an article after Alec was released from jail implying the Wildensteins were in possession of stolen artwork trafficked by the Nazis. This of course cast a spotlight on the entire Wildenstein art empire, causing more drama in the wake of the divorce. Alec's father found the revelation of his son's affair totally embarrassing. Despite having a lecherous streak of his own, Daniel couldn't believe that Alec was so brazen about the affair and that his arrest had hit the tabloids, shifting the blame to Jocelyn for calling the police. Since Daniel still controlled the purse strings of the Wildenstein Empire, he decided to cut Jocelyn off of the enormous stipends that fueled her socialite lifestyle. Alec restricted Jocelyn's movement within their five-story New York mansion, blocking off most doorways and leaving her with access to just the bedroom, a sitting area, kitchen, and the pool. She was also barred from using their jet plane. Being cut off from the Wildenstein fortune gave Jocelyn almost no maneuverability. She evidently had no fortune to call her own, and had access to only a single chauffeur, maid, and personal assistant. Nevertheless, she refused to be seen by reporters in anything less than the finest clothing and jewelry. Apparently, the loss of her personal staff left Jocelyn so vulnerable that she couldn't even cook in her own kitchen, as she was unable to make heads or tails of the industrial-grade appliances. She later told tabloids she didn't even know how to boil a kettle of water. Her lawyer insisted this decision be reversed, calling Jocelyn a, quote, prisoner in her own home. New York Magazine wrote that tabloids took full advantage of the court case just to publish photos of Jocelyn, who they described as, quote, otherworldly. Alec was even said to have asked the judge for a closed courtroom because, quote, Jocelyn's looks are scaring people. In court documents, she continued trying to lay claim to the Wildenstein wealth, lamenting that her husband chose to, quote, lavish our fortune on his girlfriend. For his part, Alec insisted that their fortune was in fact his father's and his father's alone, stating that he himself only earned $100,000 in income a year. Alec told courts that none of the mansions, penthouses, or castles that the Wildenstein couple enjoyed belonged to him proper. He added that he made Jocelyn sign a nuptial in 1978 that released her from any entitlement to the Wildenstein fortune. In the meantime, Vanity Fair wrote that Jocelyn was spending an increasing amount of time at the plastic surgeon. One report claimed a patient of his fled in terror after seeing what he had turned Jocelyn into. Jocelyn began dating her lawyer Ken Gott during the divorce. Ken came with his own troubles. One ex-wife called him a quote, deadbeat dad who spends wildly on plastic surgery, hair weaves, and karate lessons while claiming he's too broke to support his kids. He apparently tried to get out of paying alimony and was even refusing to contribute to his children's college funds. His ex-wives were having none of it, pointing out that Ken never skimped on his own enjoyment. Indeed, Ken led the same lifestyle as his billionaire girlfriend, becoming known for outlandish claims like that he trained the Israeli forces in the way of judo. This caught up with him though, and during the trial, he filed for personal and corporate bankruptcy. Ken said money problems left him homeless and that he now had to sleep on the floor of his sister's apartment. The one ex-wife countered that he actually shacked up with Jocelyn during these difficult times. 
The romance didn't last long after his problems started up, and apparently Jocelyn broke things off soon after. She denied that his finances had anything to do with it, though. They were nevertheless photographed together right up until 2001, though it's unclear if the relationship had become purely platonic by then. In time, the judge ruled that Jocelyn was entitled to $2.5 billion up front and $100 million for 13 years thereafter. But there was a catch. Jocelyn was restricted from using any of the money on future plastic surgeries. Jocelyn began selling off her feline-themed jewelry throughout the new millennium to quote, simplify her look. Yet tabloids still showed her in the same wild outfits driving around in Rolls Royces even after the sale. Jocelyn's hope was to get into the jewelry and perfume industries after the divorce, but she didn't get far with either of these ventures. Before long, the newly divorced Jocelyn was back on the market, hitting up the fashion design circuit where she met designer Lloyd Klein during New York Fashion Week 2003. The pair totally hit it off. Lloyd was enamored with Jocelyn's eye for design and decoration. Even with Lloyd being about 20 years her junior, the pair quickly started a relationship. By 2008, Jocelyn was in talks to star in her own reality television show, capitalizing on her odd looks and eccentric lifestyle. These plans fell through, though, when she apparently refused to show up for filming, citing what the producers called, quote, meritless excuses. Her and Lloyd had been paid handsome retainers for the series, which they never returned. Parent company Transparent Television reportedly suffered considerable damage to their reputation as a result. Yet even with stiffing the production company and on top of her excessive divorce settlement, Jocelyn was having money problems. Making matters worse, her relationship with Lloyd was becoming strained as Jocelyn sold off her Manhattan penthouse and took up residence at Trump Tower. Years later, Lloyd told People Magazine that Jocelyn's behavior had in fact become more erratic, but that he was hopeful things would simmer down in due time. Yet their arguments grew more vicious, and soon Jocelyn took to throwing dinnerware across the room whenever she didn't get her way. It was now 2015. Jocelyn had been cut off from the $100 million she was to receive annually in wake of Alex's death in 2008. Now, rumblings of Jocelyn having legal problems related to her mismanagement of finances were coming to light. She was sued for $178,000 in unpaid rent and damages on her fancy LA home, which Manhattan prosecutors said she had abandoned in a pigsty. Reporters at page 6 noted this wasn't the first time Jocelyn found herself in dispute with landlords citing the time she was nearly evicted from a place a couple of years prior over, again, unpaid rent. It was also far from the last lawsuit that targeted her for stiffing someone. Throughout the years, she had found herself sued by former lawyers, architects, and personal assistants, all because she didn't pay them. Next, she was sued for almost $70,000 in unpaid credit card debt owed to American Express. The company, who had sent bill collectors after her to recoup the outstanding balance, also wanted Jocelyn to pay their court fees. But for Jocelyn, the worst was still yet to come. Jocelyn's face was all over the tabloids, once again in the wake of an explosive breakup with Lloyd Klein. The two found themselves in a nasty argument at their apartment in Trump Tower, in part owing to Jocelyn's financial troubles. During their squabbles, Jocelyn attacked Lloyd with a pair of scissors and threw a burning candle in his face. She also called his mother a bitch. I kiss you, Lloyd. I you don't touch me. 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 I didn't touch you, you don't touch me. You stop it. As she became more enraged, she scratched Lloyd with her sharp claws and threatened to kill him. According to The Guardian, Lloyd confined the aggressive Jocelyn in a walk-in closet after calling police. Lloyd said it was Jocelyn who had locked herself in the closet by mistake and that he had simply refused to help her until the cops arrived. When the NYPD arrived, Jocelyn lied to them about her age by saying she was 71 instead of 76. Lloyd was reluctant to place charges, telling People Magazine, quote, My plan was to clear the air and hope things go better and that life goes on and we both learn our lessons. I didn't want her to be heard in terms of being arrested or charged. Though Jocelyn caught charges of both felony and misdemeanor assault, she was released without bail. She was seen in the courtroom using a contraband cell phone as a mirror to put on makeup and brush her hair, until an officer of the court confiscated it. Lloyd returned to the building a few days later to collect his belongings. Jocelyn met him in the apartment lobby and asked for his keys. Leaving in a taxi cab, he soon got a call from the police telling him to return to the apartment. Jocelyn had told police that Lloyd attacked her, stealing her keys and a credit card. 
The cops quickly arrested him. Lloyd faced several charges including robbery, assault, grand larceny, and mischief. Though Jocelyn herself was facing second and third degree assault charges for the previous tirade, Lloyd seemed to pity her more than anything. He told People Magazine, quote, I feel sorry for her and feel sad. I wish her the best. It's a very unfortunate situation. I hope she will reunite with her children because that is the main part of her sadness. I can't speak for her, but the lack of contact with them is not acceptable to my views. For the time being, Lloyd had no interest in rekindling the relationship, believing it had run its course. Nevertheless, restraining orders were put on both parties limiting their contact. Little over a month after the incident, the charges against Lloyd were dropped, with prosecutors citing a lack of proof. The previous charges against Jocelyn were similarly dropped. Clearly, the restraining orders were also ineffective as the couple had resumed dating almost immediately. The pair told reporters that the ordeal made them realize just how miserable life was apart from one another. Jocelyn also took the time to reaffirm her love for plastic surgery to the media, boasting, quote, If I reach my 90s, who knows? I may one day be the oldest person in the world to have cosmetic surgery. Page 6 reports that Jocelyn was claiming to be nearly broke despite the sizable sum she had received from Alec in the divorce. Apparently Jocelyn being cut off was the fallout of the surviving Wildensteins being hit with massive tax evasion charges in France. Jocelyn ran to the media to pine about this, telling reporters, quote, I wasn't ready for it. How can I pay for dental care, doctors, the expenses of my homes, or traveling? I have nothing to pay with. You know, it cannot be that one day, all of a the sudden, they stop the payments. Just leave me like that. Jocelyn had no choice but to sell off her multi-million dollar condo. She had no pension, no investments, and certainly no savings account. As it turns out, Lloyd had been paying her way for months, but lamented he did not have the finances to keep this going. Despite this, in mid-2017, Lloyd had proposed to Jocelyn with a 32 carat diamond ring. Though she accepted, it wasn't long before the two were back at it, fighting like cats and dogs. The pair got into another major argument after a casserole dish one of them was using overheated and exploded. A physical altercation broke out, leaving Lloyd with a cut-up forehead and Jocelyn with multiple bruises on her arms. The couple insisted that the injuries instead came from passionate intercourse the couple had engaged in. According to their side of the story, Lloyd had burned himself with beef broth from the shattered dish and slipped while rushing to the bathroom to wash it off. When Jocelyn went to check on him, they began to loudly embrace, leading to the screeches that caused neighbors to call security. The detail refused to hear out their side of events though and had the police there in minutes to shuttle them away. Both parties were charged with misdemeanor assault and were again ordered to stay away from each other for a few days. But once more, this incident didn't spell the end of their relationship, and it seems they moved on from it pretty quickly. Lloyd arranged for Jocelyn to do a photo shoot with the Daily Mail, along with her first televised interview in two decades. She continued to battle rumors that her looks were the result of too much plastic surgery, reaffirming her facial structure came from her Swiss heritage. Lloyd also chimed in, telling reporters, quote, She never really did anything to change her face. I have pictures from 16 years old where she looks exactly the same as today. Jocelyn also flat out denied ever having plastic surgery despite decades of documented evidence to the contrary. Her excuse was that her late ex-husband had planted such stories in the media to make her look crazy during the divorce proceedings. Unfortunately, 2018 came with its own share of troubles. After burning through almost all of her billions of dollars years earlier, Jocelyn filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The filing revealed she had $16,386,100 in assets and $6,380,080 in liabilities. Jocelyn blamed her financial issues on being cut off from the divorce's trust fund, now saying that the money had been guaranteed by way of a famous painting the Wildensteins own that wound up being a forgery. She told the media she was on the hunt for an extremely skilled lawyer who would sue the pants off the trust fund and get her the money she was owed. It doesn't seem this went very far. In the midst of her bankruptcy, Jocelyn told the court that her monthly income was but $900 from Social Security, and that she had $0 in her bank account. What's more is that various tabloids reported that she was still involved in multiple lawsuits from not paying her bills, compounding her financial strain. As a result, her handful of condos in the Trump Tower were repossessed. Jocelyn wrote in a signed affidavit that she had resorted to borrowing money off friends and family, but gave no indication she had cut down her expenses to ease her financial burden. Jocelyn also found herself in trouble with a jewelry dealer she owed hundreds of thousands of dollars to. 
Apparently, checks that Lloyd had wrote for the precious gems had bounced, meaning she'd have to give back $250,000 worth of emeralds and diamonds. Jocelyn, however, claimed that she had lost the jewelry and had no idea where it went. The courts eventually ruled that Lloyd was on the hook for the cost of the lost gems. An HBO docuseries chronicling Jocelyn's life was in the works as of June 2023. Working with the team responsible for keeping up with the Kardashians, Jocelyn hoped this could inject some much-needed income into her bank account, which still hadn't recovered in the wake of her bankruptcy. She complained to the media that she hadn't had income in eight years following her string of legal issues and being cut off from the Wildenstein fortune. Yet despite the sob story she told courts half a decade prior, she was still living in luxury the same as always. Lloyd had loftier goals for Jocelyn's story, hoping that if it was successful they could turn it into a feature film series starring Jennifer Lawrence as his dear fiancé and Rami Malek as Alec Wildenstein. Lloyd also explained that the documentary was meant to be Jocelyn's response to the public scrutiny she's faced over the years for her bizarre appearance and chaotic lifestyle. As of late 2023, Jocelyn has kept the tabloids updated on her life through heavily manipulated photos she shares on her Instagram, though these typically get little, if any, interaction. Jocelyn's life story now serves as a cautionary tale about mixing wealth beyond measure with an unhinged and often self-destructive personality. Though it's still not totally clear how Jocelyn managed to go broke, this anomaly is a bleak reminder that despite apparently losing it all, these rich personalities still always seem to find a way to keep up their extravagant lifestyles. Ironically, it is a line from Catwoman in The Dark Knight Rises, which sums up Jocelyn's fall from grace best. Quote, The rich don't even go broke the same as the rest of us. <laughs>